Hello and welcome to the playoff preview part two ahead of the second leg of the playoff semi-final. Leeds United taking on Derby and of course we return here to Ellen Road on Wednesday night with a 1-0 advantage thanks to Kamaru's goal on Saturday. We're joined by former Leeds players uh, Tony Dorigo and Ben Parker just to, to preview that game the second leg but also reflect on that victory down at uh, Derby County on Saturday. And it was a victory, gents, we'll begin with yourself Tony, that um, had all the hallmarks of what Leeds have done so well this season, you know, almost a perfect away performance, wasn't it? Uh, it was, and, and what was strange for me is that if you look at the two games previously against Derby, um, it was very similar, in that normally it doesn't happen like that. When you keep playing a, the same opponent, it, it changes, the games change, don't they? This one was exactly the same. You know, we, we stifled them, they couldn't play, they, they struggled in midfield, couldn't get their passing game going, uh, and we dominated possession and looked really good. So, uh, really promising performance, and when we talked before about the, some poor performances that we had, all of a sudden, at the right time, I thought we stood up and played fantastically well. I think the thing that struck me, Ben, was Derby's approach first 10 minutes, obviously trying to press us high, but we settled into the game so quickly, didn't we, relaxed? We quiet the crowd and that, that were a big thing, but you expect the first five, 10 minutes Derby to come out all guns blazing, put you under a bit of pressure, just because they're at home. And we weathered that, weathered their pressure, and then we just kept the ball simple. Little passes around the back four, go back to the keeper, out to the other side. Sounds very simple, but all it did, it just quieted the game down. Because the first half, from probably a neutral's point of view, nothing really happened. But from our point of view, it was great. The, the crowd quieting down, we got into our rhythm, we got into our stride. And then we kicked on start of the second half and got, got that goal, which can be a really big, vital goal, that. Yeah, and they and Derby, you know, didn't have a shot on target in the game, Tony. So defensively, you know, with Berardi coming in, Janssen missed mm. out. We were solid, weren't we? Yep. Uh, and again, you, you're looking at the defence. I mean, I, I always look further up the pitch as well. You look at the midfield and you look at the, the forwards. Just the work rate, because the ball was never allowed to get into a, a good area with any sort of player on it with time and space. Uh, and that's as a defender. It's fantastic. So the hard work is done at the top. And then, but at the back, you're right. When it was needed, Baradi had made you know fantastic challenge as well. Um, he's done really well because I must admit, yeah, when he started th this season, uh, I thought, wow, he, he's done magnificent. Then got left out. And then of course injuries. Uh, I saw him come back under 23s, and I thought he was a yard or two off the pace. I think physically he probably needs a few games. I tell you what, he, he looked fantastic. He was he was there, rock solid uh, alongside Coops, and and did wonderfully well. Yeah, Berardi. I mean, Liam Cooper was saying in his press conference out of the second game, Ben, that you know Berardi's has put off an operation. He should have really had an operation this season, but didn't want to because he wanted to sort of play his part. He, he's somebody that Leeds have relied on time and time again, haven't we? Not sound like Berardi not wanting to go <laughs> through that putting his put his body, body on the line, yeah, yeah, and it, it's a good job because we, we needed him on Saturday. Obviously, with Pontus missing. And it strikes me as a player, I don't know about you, Tony, he loves defending. Mm. I don't think there's many people in this day and age who love defending, but the right. type like him, he does the, does the basics well. He tracks, he tracks them, the centre forwards if they're dropping deep, he's up the backside, he's not allowing him to turn. Ball gets played in, down the side like we've seen with Nugent, he's there for putting the block in. So he does all the basics well, what you need from a defender. I think he relishes it, he, yes, he really enjoys it. Where some, you can see, it's, it's, they do it, but he seems to absolutely you know, love it. And, and the thing is, he hasn't got blessed with great pace either, but I tell you what, I think his uh, ability to compete and never, ever, ever, ever give up, you know, and of course, well, he's someone up near, even better, but yeah, uh, he did another, another great game, he had a vital stage of the season for us. OK, let's talk about the goal then, because it was a moment of real quality. I think mm. something that has probably been overshadowed by maybe the Premier League culmination this weekend or anything else, because the, the goal had a little bit of everything, didn't it, Tony? I mean, great interplay with Harrison and, and Dallas, and Harrison's pass, the pass of the season, is it not? And, mm. and again, Roof's finish, mm. it made it look easy, but that is, it's far from simple. It, it, it looks simple football mm. that is so difficult yeah. to do, it's <laughs> that sort of thing. You think, we got the ball there, how do you get, so the one-twos were fantastic, obviously, but Harrison, that timing of the pass, obviously there's a, there's a big gap between keeper and defence, so it, it's there inviting, but to get the bend on it, to get around, then to get it back into Roof, and of course, what you're trying to do is, is give Kemar the, the, the opportunity to hit it first time. So the pace on the ball has to be perfect as well. It had everything, it had everything. And of course, the finish then, I don't know, I, I didn't think he was going to miss either. It's just one of those things and, and bang, I think Derby, Roof, us, it means goals, doesn't it? I mean, that's what happened. <laughs> yeah, incredible. I mean, that, that, the pass from Harrison, but you know, if, if uh, someone like Kevin De Bruyne is pulling that off, it's talked oh. about for days and days, isn't it? Of course it is, but maybe picked up from Kevin De Bruyne, obviously the Man City connection there. But the vision as well, there's so many bodies in between himself and Kamar Roof. Yeah, like I was saying, it's great the, um, to get the uh, kind of whip on it. And it was a big gap between kind of the defence and, and the keeper. But you got to execute as well, under pressure. And you're right, everything about it were, were perfection. But then the finish as well, 
I, I, I didn't think I was going to miss. I didn't think anybody connected to Leeds thought he was going to miss. And, that, and that, that's the confidence you have in players like Kamara Roof in these big occasions. The blow for us, of course, is that Roof's been ruled out of this game mm. uh, at home. Obviously, Patrick Bamford is back from, from suspension, but that is a blow because Roof is... When he started to score, he has he's gone on little runs, so we were really looking forward to him sort of terrorising Derby's backline. But I mean, Bamford's goal record this season has been has been great in the games that he's played. But but it, but it is a bit of a blow considering how well he played on Saturday, isn't it? It is. You have to rock and roll with the, with these injuries. Unfortunately, uh, it's not nice to to see. And obviously, Forshaw as well is injured. But we've had that. Janssen was out. You've got to make sure the the squad is strong enough. And Bielsa has always said, you know, it's a team. It's a it's a game of 18, 20 players. Um, and Bamford coming back in, I think he's got a point to prove as well. Uh, you know he'll be working extremely hard and he'll want to score you know, desperately. As so. so to have that back up, I think, is uh, is vital at this stage, yeah. Well, Bamford will be motivated, not only because of the suspension that, it, that he uh, sort of uh, you know got, Ben, which you know was, was not great, of course, from his point of view. He's apologised to the players yeah. after that. But also, you know, if Leeds are successful on Wednesday, there's a, there's a spot at Wembley up for grabs and, and him and Kamaru will both be desperate for it, won't they? Ultimately, as a player, you want to be selfish in these situations. You want to be in the starting eleven if we get through to that far. But I'm sure for Patrick's point of view, he's not looking that far ahead. He's going to take Wednesday very seriously. And you're right, he has got a point to prove. For you. He'll, he'll let himself down, let the lads down. But I think his performance in the Aston Villa game as a whole were really positive. It was one of the occasions where he get, got hold of the ball, looks after it, popped it off nice and simple, spun and got in the box. And that's what that's what he's going to need. He works hard off the ball, that, that's a given. But the ball's into him on Wednesday night and he needs to look after the ball, give us that platform to when we're going forward, we can trust, we can rely on him, just start the attack and the build-up and then that's when we can get the third men running going off him. Yeah, uh, other injuries, of course, as, as you mentioned, Tony hit it to them for sure, mm. you know, Tyler Roberts, you know, a couple of other sort of niggles, Pontus Janssen will be will be assessed. So, selection dilemma for, for Marcelo Bielsa. So, I guess that's a big question, is it? If Pontus is fit, do you bring him in? We've just talked about Berardi, how well how well he did. Of course, Bamford comes in to replace Roof and possibly Jamie Shackleton, of course, keeping his place in mm. midfield. What would you do at the back, Tony? I mean, Janssen's been there all season, but Berardi played so well Saturday. I'd put Janssen back in. Uh, simple as that. You know, very much uh, Janssen and Cooper are the, the leaders of the side, so I think that's important. Uh, if he doesn't make it, Berardi going in, absolutely yeah. you know, no problems at all. So, that's good. Shackleton, what a, what a player. Uh, I think it's, uh, he's a young player, we know that. Every time he's came on, he's shown so much energy and ability. Not only just the energy, uh, but just what he then does you know, when he's out on that pitch has been tremendous. For me, it's never been a case of, of, of when or if Shackleton's going to play. It's where, because I think he's that good. He should be in there, but he's been, I suppose, overshadowed slightly in that Jack Clark has jumped in ahead of him. Uh, experienced players have been ahead of Shackleton as well. But wow, what a performance he comes on and give it so much energy in that midfield. Uh, his ability to, to, I think, get up and down the pitch uh, is vital, how, how we play. Uh, especially defensively, you've got to work very hard. But of course, then if you can bomb forward and vacate those areas to then support the striker, uh, which is what Shackleton was doing just you know all game long was tremendous. So, uh, yeah, I like him. I yeah. think he's really good <laughs> and he should play. We all do. He, he, he impressed you as well, but didn't he, Ben? I mean, he impressed a lot of people. He's played in different positions this season. He's been playing at right back and things. But he is a central midfielder. That's where he's going to end up, and that's where he he played on Saturday. What particularly impressed you about his performance? His energy, what he brought, and his kind of calmness. Because as a young player coming to these occasions, you can be a bit nervous, can be a bit edgy, and the way he looked after the ball in possession, I thought it was great. But then also he didn't neglect the defensive work, and that's a big big thing for Bielsa in this team. Off the ball, you've got to work ever so hard. You've got to stay with runners, fill into gaps where people have vacated. And there were a 30 second clip in, inside the second half where he's got back into the box, he's made a challenge. 30 seconds later, he's put in the crossing, which Pablo Hernandez just missed out sliding in. And with all in, within 30 seconds, he stopped in one box, nearly provided in the other. Pablo and just great. missed it. He missed it completely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Side footed him. He just went, went with the wrong it was a, foot. It was amazing, wasn't it? Oh, it was a, it was a, a great counter attack. Yeah. but. That with Jamie Shackleton in, in a nutshell, and it's kind of been um, it's been nurtured in that right back position, and I think it's been a great bit of management from Bielsa breaking him into the team, giving him a little taster, just out out of the way, out of the kind of like the fire and all the heat inside of the central midfield, learning his experience, learning the trade of playing at first team level, just just in the right back position, and he just showed there like you, you can trust him. So I've, I've got no problem whatsoever if he, if he plays on Wednesday. It reminds me a lot of Lewis Cook, you know, just in, in terms of that, and in terms of that pace in central midfield. But also talk about the composure of a player coming in. It's great credit to everyone at the academy. Well, obviously the player himself yeah. first and foremost, Tony. But how many of these young players have come into the team in the last 10, 15 years? And how many times have we said about any of them? Oh, they're overall by the occasion. Mm -hmm. They are so ready. They've got the quality and they've got the confidence. But they come in with exactly the right attitude. 
Yeah, well scored. Uh, it's easy to have that, I think, confidence when, when you know what you're doing exactly. You've got that uh, technical ability as well. But it's always the question mark is handling the occasion, the, the fans, the crowd. Can you do that? But I think they're so confident in what they can do. They get out there and, and play. Um, and Shackleton is just an absolute dream, I think, for Bielsa to have on the bench. I saw him uh, pre-season was the first time I saw him. And he played at right wing back. And I said, Jesus, who is this? Right, wing back, and then the guy is, is he a full back? Is, yeah. No, he's a midfielder. I thought, he's a midfielder. Like, <laughs> okay. He just did everything. I thought, well, and he just never stopped. I thought, right, I'll watch him again. Same thing. I'm thinking, oh, wow, this kid. Uh, but not only that, I think he sacrifices himself at times for the team, very much as a team ethic. It's not what he can do, it's what he needs to do. He does the right thing at the right time. And you only get that, I think, more experienced players playing, playing the right pass at the right time, doing the right thing. He seems to do it very natural. In the midfield, you need to be, you know, look after that ball, and he does that really well as well. You mentioned the Hernandez chance as well from Saturday. Ben, should Leeds go into the second leg with a greater advantage than the one they do? If I'm being critical, <laughs> be harsh. We've been overcritical. Well, Marcelo Bielsa was asked that question himself, you know, and he, he, he did kind of hint at the fact that, you know, maybe on another day he could have scored a few more, which has obviously been a bit of a topic about Leeds towards the end of the season. But yeah. it, it's it's still a lead, which is which is all we want it to bring back to on the road, isn't it? Look, if you said before Saturday, would you take a 1-0 victory? I think everyone would snap your hand off for that. But the way the game kind of went, like restricting Derby to no shots on target, you start to look, could we have added to that 1-0 scoreline? Yeah, we had a couple of moments, I think, of Roof's chance where the keepers saved it low down to his left-hand side. I thought that was a big chance. And I think if we went 2-0, I wouldn't say the, um, the tie would have been dead and buried there and then, but it had been a massive step towards us getting to Wembley. But we've got, we've got a massive job in hand now on Wednesday. Derby have got nothing to lose. Everyone probably expects us to turn up and turn them over with having this advantage. So, and that makes Derby a very dangerous team. So we've got to take care of our business. It's a massive, massive game. But if we apply ourselves like we did do on, on Saturday, we should have too much for them. Derby are going to have to produce something special though, Tony. I mean, in three mm. games now, I think, and it's down to us, we've made you know, what are a very good side based on their league position look mm. pretty ordinary. They haven't really done that much to hurt us. So their approach, they've got to come to Allen Road and win the game. Does, does that suit us? Because we will play the same way. But I'm trying to think what they can do. And obviously yeah. Frank Lampard's been thinking of that since the first game. You know, what, what can I do? And he hasn't come up with any solutions that I can see. Um, they're very much a ball-playing side. You know, they like to have a lot of possession. When you take it away from a team like that, sometimes you think, hold a second, we don't normally play like this. And then you struggle. Uh, you're right, the pressing, I think, was first five, ten minutes. Once we got past that press... They're thinking, hold on a sec, we're getting picked off here. We've got to drop back. So that doesn't work. What else do you then do? So it's going to be difficult for them. They need to change something. Uh, like always, every game, first, go, first goal is going to be so important. You know, If they can get a first goal, then maybe then you can see them play slightly differently. Uh, but I just can't see over a 90-minute period how we can do it. I actually thought the 90 minutes down here against Derby was our most complete 90-minute performance, giving them nothing, absolutely nothing. Two nil should have been, you know, four or five. We, we played that well. Anything approaching that, and we're we're there. But it, it's you still have to have the mindset. If it's half time, you're one nil up, and that is it. We've seen them. We this this last few weeks of football has been unbelievable, yeah. incredible. Crazy. So forget it. We're only one nil up at half time, and it's another really important. Uh, 90 minutes ago. But the Allen Road crowd will play their part, won't they, Ben? I mean, it is, I was speaking to Eddie Gray about this, and he said, look, it's just like having one game and you've scored after 10 seconds. It's, <laughs> it's that, kind of, it'll be that kind of atmosphere right, right from the word go, won't it? Special, special. You, you were telling me, just for the being back down at Ellen Road, people were down, what, 11, 11.30? For the very, five, for the five very early. Very the bar early. opened at half 11, Ben. Yeah, so well, that's probably why. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so people are just killing time, we're just desperately waiting <laughs> of course, for people. Yeah. Right? I, can, I can imagine similar type of scenes, people arriving very early, trying to just soak up the atmosphere, because, let's be honest, this build-up lead up to the game, it's a bit of a toe on gesture, you don't really want anything to do with it, you just want to get straight to the game and get down to the ground, soak up the atmosphere, have a big build up and I can think back to the playoff games I've been involved in here when the crowd, you always have a few thousand fans anyway greeting the players but it doubled in, doubled in atmosphere, doubled in size then and it, I expect similar on Wednesday and that's making it intimidating for, for Derby County. Ten years ago now, that Ben, that playoff semi-final here against Millwall. And age, and age one for Becchio, not at all. But I mean, <laughs> that was. That? <laughs> yeah, but, that, but that actually was, you know, in recent years. I mean, that was. I'm saying recent years, a decade ago. But it, one of the loudest atmospheres, really, because there's so much on the line, isn't there? And I think ten years for an atmosphere to be created like that again. It's far, far too long for a club the size of Leeds United. We should be having these moments, season in, season out. And what an occasion for the players. I'm sure they can't wait. 
I want to put my boots on and go out play. I'm sure you do, Tony. These, yeah. these are the type of games as players you just love and you just relish. So, look, the atmosphere is going to be there. It's going to be a given. Can the players live up to the occasion? They've proved that they can so far this season. It's just one more game. They've got to do that. Yeah, and uh, I suppose that's why everyone's kind of listened to the players' quotes and Marcelo Bielsa. Mm. Tony, you, you kind of play it down, don't you? Because it is only half the, half the job done, but the, the incentive to prize is huge now. Price is huge. Uh, I think that's where you then have to really bring it back to the, the present and do exactly what you were, you know, you did. Uh, you, you follow the, the instructions of the manager. You uh, recover properly. You know, you prepare correctly. Uh, go through the exact same things. Um, yeah, the prize is absolutely gigantic, and uh, Wembley uh, is not too far around the corner. It's difficult to shut your mind off to that. Isn't it? That's it the is. problem. Yeah. And so the only thing is, it's when the lads start talking to others. You know, they're the ones. Who go, oh, can you get me some tickets? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just stop. You know, yeah. cut that out. No, no, I've got to focus on Wednesday night. That's me only focus now. Is that first minute? Do everything. Start right. Start the game. Soak in that atmosphere, yeah. and then give it absolutely everything. And it's a strange one as well because if Leeds get the right result, which we, we all hope and, and expect on Wednesday, Ben, you know, you've reached Wembley, which is it's a great thing to kind of celebrate, but it's not done yet. The other prize is actually promotion. It's not getting to Wembley, is it? No, other than the word you use there, Tony, focus. I think they've got it in the bucket loads of this squad. The focus is so deadly, it's so so bang on. Like you're you're right, people will be talking away from the from the players about oh, can we get tickets, can we get this all booked down for Wembley? But the players know they've got one more one more game to take care of before getting to there. And I've heard Liam Cooper come out and mention it. They said, "Look, we we know the prize at end. We're not we're not stupid enough to know the prize. You can't play it down, can you? Of course, you know, we all, we all know it's there, and um, it's good to talk about it. But the um, the focus that these players have shown throughout the course of a season has been so deadly, and I I fully expect them to have that focus tuned in, even a little bit more focused on on Derby on Wednesday night. Okay, score prediction then, gents. Wednesday, what do we think? How's it going to go? Uh, I actually think we'll get the first goal and we'll probably get another one as well. So 2-0. Okay, 2-0 Tony. I fancy another 1-0. I've probably a similar type of game. Well, fingers crossed it'll go like when we played at Ellen Road with a 2-0. But I think 1-0. And it'll be interesting. Derby will come and do something different. But I don't know what they can because we're going to play the exact same way. So the emphasis is on Derby to try and produce something different. Okay, good stuff, gents. Thank you very much as well. We're looking forward to it. Anticipation. He's definitely here, of course, ahead of that game on Wednesday night at Ellen Road. We're just uh, sort of waiting for the hours to tick by now and waiting for a uh, kickoff, aren't we? Uh, make sure you join LU TV Live as well. We'll have all the build up as well from an hour before kickoff as well. Adam Forshaw will be in the studio as well as our special guest. And you can get your audio match pass at the website, leadsunited.com. <laughs>